Howdy folks, I'm Kevin Gilmore and I serve as the pastor at First United Methodist Church of LaPorte, Texas. And I'd like to welcome you to this online service of worship on Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. Uh, we're beginning a new sermon series today called One. And so I'm glad you've joined us as we learn how to live in community as one. Lots and lots of stuff going on here at the church. I hope you'll get involved. I hope you'll uh, call us if you need us. Uh, let us know what we can do for you. And now enjoy this time of worship. God bless. pray with me. Gracious God, who empowers us to be your people, we rely upon your spirit. We recognize our need for you and your guidance to be faithful people in the body of Christ and in this world. We are in your hands and your feet, and we are the ones you have called to minister to all of creation. Help us to be those hands and feet with love as our mission that informs all other mission. Let us be agents of love and goodness before anything else. Let us know we are Christians by our love. Indeed, we name today that love that is absolute calling in our lives. We are nothing without love. We cannot be community. We cannot be ourselves because our very nature is to be with one another. The church in Corinth so long ago forgot about this, looking at the details as the greatest aspect of their faith. Help us to learn from their errors in how we live as a community under Christ today. Guide us to welcome, to see that all are valued, that all have something to contribute to our success together. Guide us to know that nothing else matters, no prophecy, no teaching, no scripture matters when we do not base everything with love. As we gather today, we are aware that there are many among us and those apart from us that have needs, physical, emotional, and spiritual. You know their needs, and so we share their names now. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of love, who teaches us to love more fully every day, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome church. I'm so glad you've chosen to be with us this morning. We are beginning a new sermon series today called One. It's a three-week series uh, to get us into summer. Uh, We're going to explore what it looks like for us as believers to live as one. But first, I think we need to talk about independence. You know, it's one of the core values of American culture. We are taught from an early age to be self-sufficient. We are told to fend for ourselves as a sign of strength and maturity. It's a preferred trait in all of us. Those who can't go it alone, well, they're viewed as weak, or at least they're viewed as less capable of those than those who can. We value independence. We value individualism above almost everything else. But we were not created to live this way. It may feel counterintuitive, but the truth is we were created and called to live in community. Now let me, let me say it again. Only this time let me make it a little more personal. You, you were created and called to live in community. In the book of Genesis, God created man and then says it's not good for man to be alone. And not just because he might be lonely or or need a friend or a buddy or whatever, but because God wired us to do life together. God created us and called us to do life in community. Now the problem is most of us don't want to do this. Not because we are anti-community. We don't want to do it because we don't understand it. We don't want to do it because we have been trained to do life independent. We don't want to do it because we don't know what we're missing. We don't want to do life in community because we don't know how to do life in community. And as a result, most of us are far too focused on being individuals. But this individualism, I think, is is robbing us of the joy and the strength and the hope that we are so desperate for. And the only way to break the habit of doing life alone, the only way to experience the life that we were truly meant to live, is to learn how to live in and amongst community. And that's what these three weeks are going to be all about. So for these next two weeks, so today and the next two weeks, we're going to explore what it looks like to live life in community. Not just as a group of different individuals, but we're going to learn what it looks like to live as one. So let's pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. This is far more important than most of us realize. Not just because doing life alone leaves us lacking, but because we are each wonderfully and uniquely created to be a part of community. And through that community, to transform our world. Now this means that we must learn to do life together. We must learn to do life with others, even when life with others can sometimes be difficult. 
when we learn to do life as a united community, nothing, I, I believe, nothing can stop us. So if we're going to learn to live in community, do life in community, transform the world as a community, then we need to understand a couple of things about ourselves. And that's what I want us to explore today. I want to start off by asking, all right, it's going to be a tough question for you to reflect on. Have you ever discovered one of the reasons that you struggle to connect with other people is not them, but rather it's you? You know, that takes some time. I think that takes some honest thinking, right? The reason I don't connect well is not because of them, it's because of me. Multiple failed relationships, what's the common denominator? Multiple jobs ending badly, what's the common denominator? Can't find a place to connect. What's the common denominator? Never feel like you belong. What's the common denominator? Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times that, that others have left us out or have rejected us. I'm not saying we've never been the victim of, of other people's hurtful actions. But if we are honest, me included, most of the time when we don't do well in community, it's because of us. And I think it's because we don't understand who or what we are. Nor do we understand who or what others are. If we're going to learn to live in community, we must learn what we are and what this means for our lives and how we live them. So what am I? What are you? Who am I? Who are you? And how does this impact my life, your life? Well, let me give you the shortest answer I can think of. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. And how does this impact life? When you live like a masterpiece, it transforms the world around you. And that's the point. That is the point. You are a masterpiece. Act like it. That's the one thing I want you to get today. You are a masterpiece masterpiece act like it ephesians 2 10 for we are god's handiwork created in jesus christ to do god's good works which god prepare in advance for us to do the word handiwork here uh, can also be translated as masterpiece we are for we are god's masterpiece created in christ jesus to do good works we are created by God. We were created for God. We were created in the image of God. So if I am a masterpiece, how do I act like a masterpiece? Well, first you live up to your purpose. You are a masterpiece created on purpose for a purpose. And that means you have a job to do. I have a job to do. Because you are God's masterpiece, created for good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do, then you have a job to do. You have a purpose. And one of the greatest ways, one of the greatest ways that you can honor God, one of the greatest ways that you can live up to your purpose is to do the job that you were created to do. Now, this is really important. You, you need to catch this. This is really important. You may be a masterpiece. But if you are not living out your purpose, if you're not doing the job that God created you to do, then you're not living up to your value. You're not living up to your potential. A vintage car is a masterpiece. You don't use it to haul around the Little League soccer team, do you? That's why we have vans. A vintage guitar is a masterpiece. You don't let your five-year-old daughter bang on it and take it to show and tell at school. If you have the Mona Lisa, you don't use it as paper in the bottom of your birdcage, right? If it's a masterpiece, you use it according to its value. And since you are a masterpiece, you need to live up to your purpose. You need to be used for what you were created to be used for. That's why the New Testament spends so much time talking about the things that Jesus' followers should not do. God's not just giving us this list of arbitrary rules. 
God recognizes that we are masterpieces. He made us. And God does not want us to be devalued. What's your job? What were you created for? Well, your job, what you were created for is to represent Jesus. Now that means how you treat others. That means how you have conversations. That means how you manage your time. That means how you take care of your body and the world around you. So if you're going to be a masterpiece, if you're going to live up to your purpose, then we all need to ask ourselves, you need to ask yourself, how am I representing Jesus? Never think what you're doing doesn't matter. When you represent Jesus, wherever you are, you are living a life of infinite value and purpose. You're doing your job, even if the situation you find yourself in seems incredibly boring or mundane. Your job, my job, our job is to reflect Jesus back to our world. So ask yourself, what are you reflecting? That's the first. Live up to your purpose. And the second way you act like a masterpiece is recognize the value of others. Just like you were created in God's image and are therefore a masterpiece, everyone that you interact with was also made in the image of God. And if everyone else is also a masterpiece, then we've got to ask ourselves, how am I treating others? How am I treating other people? Stop and think about that for just a moment. You know, we love the idea that we're a masterpiece. Woo! I'm a masterpiece. We love how we are made in the image of God. Woo! I'm made in the image of God. But if that is true, then we must understand that everyone, everyone else is also made in the image of God. Doing life in community only works when we realize we are made in God's image and when we recognize everyone else is also made in the image of God. That's why the New Testament is not only full of things that we should avoid to help us recognize our value, but it's also full of things that we should be doing for other people because God wants us to recognize their value too. That's why Paul wrote these words to one of the Jesus communities in the first century. Philippians 2, 3, 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. Do nothing out of selfish ambition partisanship, jockeying for position, campaigning, manipulating to get your way. Do nothing out of vain conceit. Selfish ambition, vanity, they are the status quo for, for most of our culture, aren't they? But for those who follow Jesus, Paul says, no, that's not how a masterpiece treats another masterpiece. Instead, we must learn to value others above ourselves. This is what Jesus did. This is how Jesus lived. This is how Jesus impacted humanity. And when we live like this, we reflect Jesus back to the world. In fact, Paul follows this up with this. Philippians 2, 5 through 7. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God, something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. The way a masterpiece treats another masterpiece is by making yourself a humble servant like Christ. And you know the best way to do this? Go back to your purpose. Go back to your purpose. Go back to the job that you have been given. Reflect Jesus back to your world by serving others. Parents, to your kids, how are you serving them? 
Husband to your wife, how are you serving her? Wife to your husband, how are you serving him? At your job, how are you serving them? Employer, how are you serving your employees? In your neighborhood, how are you serving your neighbors? In the marketplace, how are you serving them? Online, how are you serving the people you interact with? You were created by God, and you are a masterpiece. Everyone you encounter was created by God, which makes them masterpieces too. So if we're going to be one, if we're going to be one, if we're going to get this community thing right, then we must recognize that each one of us, that we are all God's masterpieces, and we need to act like it. So what's the takeaway today? What do you need to take away from this right now? What can we do with this this morning? Well, here's a three-step takeaway for you today. Three steps. One, step one, pray God will help you realize you are a masterpiece. Ask God to reveal it to you. Ask God to show you your value in his eyes. Ask God to help you see yourself the way God sees you. That's step one. Step two, ask God to help you see others the way he sees them. Ask God to show you how you can serve other people, how you can serve those masterpieces that you encounter every day. And then step three, start serving. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait until you feel like it. Just serve. Just get out there. Just do it. Just start doing it. You won't find the perfect place right away. Just start. If we're going to find unity and if we're going to be one, then it's important for us to recognize ourselves and others as the masterpieces that God has created us to be. Let's pray. Oh Lord, help us to see ourselves and others as the masterpieces that you have created us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us respond to the word of God this morning by affirming our faith with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Thanks again for joining us today. It's been a great day of worship as we've begun this new uh, sermon series called One. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I hope you'll uh, tune in next week as we continue this series. I do want to remind you that we do have summer camp coming up the third week of June, third or fourth week of June, Father's Day week anyway. And so if you would like to send a child to camp, we need to get them registered as soon as possible. Also, if you would like to sponsor a kid going to camp, uh, the cost is, is pretty high, especially if a family has multiple uh, children that want to go to camp. So if you would like to sponsor a child for camp, please let us know. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen.